Namaste everyone, here from Body Surfing Yoga. We're here with Katie Jones. Um, and as you know, we are doing a series of um, yoga videos and Facebook Lives and um, to talk about a little bit of yoga philosophy and in the practice of yoga, especially in this moment that we're facing. Um, the situation that I think that at least we're all together on this. <laughs> so, uh, Katie, thank you for joining me. Of course. Um, would you introduce yourself? It would be easier for me. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I'm Katie, as Kelly said. I This is my third time visiting Bodhi Surf and Yoga. And I'm a yoga instructor. I also run women's circles and I teach and coach in the realm of manifestation. So this is a very interesting time for all of us and I think that we have some really exciting things to share with you all today. Thank you, Katie. Absolutely. Um, and I think that uh, right this moment is a good time to start talking about all the other aspects we teachers have been said that, that yoga can bring into our lives other than the asana practice. Because in this modern world, Everyone wants to do not only asana practice, but tough, well-demanding, sweaty yoga practice, and, which is great. <laughs> it feels really good. Yeah. Uh, but I, yoga has different tools, and the philosophy, the breathing, the meditation, and everything that we can use, especially in this moment. So let's jump ahead and let's start talking about one of them. So we wanted to bring out about the yoga philosophy and what things we can use right now to deal in a more healthy way with the situation. So, uh, I wanted to bring the subject of the Yoga Sutras. So many, most people who practice know the Yoga Sutras, right? And um, the Sutras is like the Bible of the Yoga. And um, <clears throat> it has different chapters. Uh, they are like, Sutras means uh, threats. So it's different words that we can use uh, that bring us information about not only the yoga practice, but about like our lives. Yoga is a path. The first uh, chapter of the Yoga Sutras speaks mostly about meditation, contemplation, and how we can uh, get into this deep level of, of contemplation. Um, but we're not touching upon that. We're moving into chapter two, <laughs> the Sadhana Pada, which is the practice which I think is uh, sadhana means practice. What can we do in our lives to get to a better state in our minds, in our bodies, in our souls? And I wanted to bring out the subject. Among the sadhana pada, we hear a concept that is called tapas, um, which is sometimes when you read and analyze the sutras, it has been translated as austerities, right? Mm. And uh, in other cases, which I like this description better, is uh, burning the impurities of the being, not only of the mind, of the body, of everything. Like doing these practices to burn everything that needs to be burned. But one thing that I would like to that tapas is that it needs to be in a disciplined way. Like everything, you know, we can not just go surfing one time and pretend we're gonna surf well. We cannot if we wanna work out to you know like to do a race or whatever, we need to really be disciplined. Well in the mind we also need to be disciplined. So um, I wanted to bring a few ways we can apply tapas in the mind, in the body, and in the speech, which are two very, three different areas that are needed of our attention. Um, in the mind, I think it's obvious that the first thing to mention would be meditation. But sometimes, especially if you're new to meditation, and I hear this from students, I don't know if it happens to you, many people say, I cannot meditate. All the time. All the time. There's too much going on in my mind. Yeah, exactly. My mind is all over the place. Yes, exactly. Meditation first is to realize that the mind is all over the place. Yeah. The, monkey it's all, the monkey mind is always like that, and we're just being like ruled by that. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, in a moment where we're this, um, dealing with this amount of tension, stress, or fear, just sitting down and meditation for an hour every day might be too much. Yeah. Right? So what about silence. What about sitting in silence and contemplation and observing the breath and observing the thoughts? 
let's just start that, like the kindergarten. <laughs> let's just start by saying, like, I'm just going to sit down. I'm going to take every day, maybe hopefully in the morning and the night, just 10 minutes to be in silence, yeah. to be here. Because sometimes we go and go and go, and I think these moments are telling me, hey, slow down. Yes. Slow down. Mm -hmm. I think all the signs are there for slow down. You're, we're all going too fast. And so let's be inside, let's, let's go in. Yes. So that would be one. And uh, another thing that I want to bring for the mind is uh, the concept of Svadaya, which is a uh, study. Um, and one of the things I feel that we're all doing is like, right now there's one subject in the life, coronavirus. That's the subject. And, uh, and if we are true to ourselves, there's other subjects going on right now. Yeah, there's something wrong happening right now. There's something that we can say is wrong. There's a crisis. There's, but there's also probably many good things happening in our lives. How about if we talk about those? And also I feel that this would be a moment, uh, instead of uh, scrolling on any social media, like nonstop reading, or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, not even like stopping like a, and gathering pieces of information and you know the news have to be terrible you know of course they are news but uh, instead of uh, being just like gathering gathering all this information that at the end is going to create a mental state in our mind or maybe binging on Netflix I don't know a narcos <laughs> <laughs> something <laughs> well I watch I have watched that <laughs> um, uh, but Instead of that, let's go into a study things that bring peace into our life. Let's go to the text that we remember that brought peace into our life. So, Katie, what would be one of yours? Like, yeah. Yes. Would you like to share which, like, bring you peace? Absolutely. Yeah. So, right now I'm reading a book called Emmanuel's Book. And what I really like about it is that the author was doing a lot of transcendental meditation and ended up encountering this being that came to her and just started reading her all these messages. And at first she was like, please stop. <laughs> I'm trying to meditate. And then she just accepted it and started writing down what he was saying. And it's just so, it's so relevant right now. All the things that he's, that he tells her, his name is Emmanuel. And this book has brought me so much peace right now. And it's just a very grounding book and helps you really connect with what's going on, but then also what you are at your essence, which is love. So mm -hmm. that's why I like that book a lot. Excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So see, like, there's so many books around. Um, I brought some of my favorite ones. Um, right now, I'm coming back to speaking about the subject. Um, one of the best books I, that ever exists, the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. I like the Swami Satchitananda version and um, because it has the explanations and it brings a lot of peace on my life. So this is one book we can recommend. The other one, um, I consider Anayengar a master in many different levels, not only in the asana practice, but the way he explains things and ground things are very good and light on life. Everyone knows light on, um, on how was that, light on Yoga? No. Light on yoga, yeah. yeah, like light on life. Um, but this one is for me the best of, of how to live, uh, follow the yoga path. And um, I have others that I don't have. I have it on my Kindle, but I like to recommend Pema Chodron. Um, she has a book, the title is it's very accurate, maybe for the moment when things fall apart. Mm. <laughs> and uh, But it, it, the, the title looks a little bit more. Um, stressful than the, the thing itself and it can bring a lot of peace of like how we deal with these situations mentally and emotionally you know um uh, yeah. make another recommendation yeah so i know a lot of people are going through really tough times whether it's losing their jobs or being laid off whatever and a book on manifestation that's just so clear and so easy to follow is you are a badass by jen sincero so if that's something that you're going through and it's now time to manifest a new job or new opportunities or new clients, that book will give you a perfect blueprint for manifesting anything into your life. So yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, 
So yeah, there's many books around. Uh, it could be a yoga book. It could be, and it could be any spiritual text that you remember. That okay, when I read this, um, it brought me peace. Um, I recommend also Siddhartha from Hermann Hesse. It has been my favorite book ever since I was a teenager. And it's a book you read like in one afternoon, and um, you get a different perspective of life. Yes, and also the Tao. Uh, the Tao is really good and really appropriate for this moment where uh, you need to surrender. That's what we need. We we need to surrender, practice acceptance, slow down, and be with ourselves. Be be in small groups. Be you know, downsides. Uh, I also wanted to bring about the uh, speech. In Kappas, we also, in yoga, I remember one teacher of mine saying, the yoga begins with the way we talk. Mm. And this is so important because right now in the modern world, it's all about asana, studios, and everything. But we can actually practice yoga just by like looking at the way we say things, mm -hmm. we talk. Mm -hmm. And in the Yoga Sutras, I like that it says that the speech should always be pleasant, truthful, beneficial for the everyone everyone and us too. And uh, also in the right moment, in the right, right place, right moment. Uh, it's not that we have to go about life saying everything, you know, with our filter, <laughs> everything we feel. And uh, sometimes I think we make a mistake and what we consider the, to be truth is just our opinion. Yeah, that's it. Um, when we practice this, uh, when I started reading the Yoga Sutras and I think the yoga suggests is not about reading it, it's about studying it. Yeah. And see how like you can integrate it in your life. Practicing it's not, it. Yeah, it's not a like easy life book, okay, I read fifty pages today. Uh, no, it's about okay, I'm gonna how can I digest things and bring it into my life? And one of the things I noticed is that when I started working on my speech, I go up and down. <laughs> uh, is that I started being more quiet. Mm. Because many times I was like, no, there's no need to say this. Yeah. You know? Uh, even if it's true, uh, it's not pleasant. It's not going to benefit that person. So it has to like have all this characteristic. It has to be truthful, but beneficial, but in a, in a good moment. And it has to be pleasant, like bring um, good feelings around. And I think that this time right now, it would be a good moment to practice that. And, um, Instead of all of us talking, oh yeah, this is so terrible, we're going to all die and this is the end, or we're going to starve, or there's not going to be toilet paper, blah, blah, this is, well, we're going through this, uh, let's hope for the best, you know, be the good energy, yeah. uh, we got to stay positive, hey, we're in this together, or whatever, like, brings good energy into all of us, how can we support how can I support you? Yeah. And then on the other thing on speech is instead of like being also worried you know, mentally about what is going on with us, how are you? What is going on? Yeah. Other than this situation, what is going on? Yeah. You know? um, and listen more than we talk. Um, so the speech might be something where we can practice this tapas, this uh, burning the impurities of, and trying to say um, the things that, you know, a bring good into our life. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, like other way we can approach tapas, it's through the asana practice. We all know this. <laughs> we all love this one. And uh, but this is like also important, like to remember what was the intention of the yoga practice, the asana. Some people have more belief into the asana. Some people less. I have. I have my my belief is high <laughs> on the asana practice because I do believe that there like in that strong connection between the mind and what happens in the body. So for me, the asana practice is a way to release all the memories and tensions out of the body. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it is a very wise way to do things with the slow breathing and the movements and the holding the postures. By personal experience, I would say that it does create something in your mind. It does create something different. Yeah. Um, and I know that some, it works for some people, might not work for others, but one important thing is that um, to remember that, that that was the intention of the asana practice in the beginning, more than to go deeper. It was about like releasing what needs to be released in order for us to be careful with our mind, to be careful with our speech. 
And also, what I think in right at this moment, one of the good things would be to uh, relax, <laughs> which is so <laughs> it's so hard for us to do, yes. right? Uh, it, we're always in the go, go, go. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that we have the most fear of right now is because we're being asked, hey, slow down, <laughs> chill, you know? And it was like, oh my God, what is that? How does that look like? Yeah. <laughs> How do we do that? You know, I, I remember when I first came here and I remember the Costa Rica long ago or like, it's still the areas you go and visit remote and, and, and you see people, they take a lot of time to chill. Yeah. You know, they do the thing, they do their work, the house is clean, everything is, and then they kind of like go outside and in the hammock and just, and just chill yeah. and just, and I think like, um, we don't know what that is. Like, <laughs> how do I do that? So, so you're just there. <laughs> That's all you're doing. <laughs> um, so great, let's take advantage of like, uh, then maybe we can do that. So let's, um, maybe uh, we brought today a relaxation exercise. We're gonna practice yoga nidra. Yoga nidra is uh, a technique. Nidra means sleep, the yoga sleeping. And um, to find that state where you're kind of asleep and then you come back up. You can then, so you're flowing between that because it's a really good way to relax the body. I've been doing it lately for obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, and it's really, really helping me work like sleep. I'm still with all the situation going still. I'm sleeping full nights. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm doing it now to my kids. And Clea, my four year old, she goes like, mm. you know, and uh, she goes to bed and she sleeps full nights. So, because sometimes we, we're about to go to bed and we just like, uh, yeah, and we're like on the phone. Mm. Right before the, then we put it right next to it. I kind of like, was that the last message? <laughs> uh, so it would be a good idea to disconnect, like even an hour before or more. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, phone, no phones, no computer, no TV, no nothing, and just like do a good relaxation so we can really get some rest. So we have a model today. She's going to help us. We're going to do a guided yoga nidra. This is going to be so hard for you. Yeah. You make it so work so <laughs> Yeah. So if you're in your house, if you want to take that, maybe you'll do it tonight. Look for a place. Do, do a good setting. Okay, so look for whatever brings you peace. Aromatherapy, it's a good idea always. Um, put some candles, put some images that bring you peace. Uh, and you can lay down in your bed or you can do this. I'm putting a bolster under her knees in her case because normally we do it in here a lot because in Shavasana, so it allows the back to rest a little bit. So maybe uh, can you spread the legs a little bit more and separate the arms away from the body. And she's gonna close her eyes. We're gonna start just by guiding the attention into the breath. Let's breathe deeply, inhaling. Exhale. Deep breathing. Imagine you have a balloon right inside your abdomen. And you want to fill up the balloon as you inhale. And then as you exhale, you feel the belly falling down. Do the same in your ribcage. Fill up your ribcage as you inhale. And as you exhale, feel the rhythm coming back down. Continue with the awareness on your breath. And imagine you're not only breathing with your lungs, you're breathing with the whole body. So imagine you're creating expansion 
ask you me. And as slowly you're falling heavy down on the floor as you exhale. Allow the breath to soften the muscles all around the body. Allow the breath to soften the joints all around the body. Allow the breath to make you feel light and soft. And as you're holding this position, and as you continue with the breath, let's be aware of any emotions or, sur or thoughts coming to the surface. Acknowledge and honor those feelings, those thoughts, and then let them go. Release. Let's try not to classify any emotion or thought as negative or positive. Positive. Just let it pass by. Notice and observe what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and then release. It. Come back to the breath. Bring the awareness to the right foot. Notice your right foot and release any tension around it. Now be aware of your left foot. And relax your left foot. Now bring your awareness to your right leg. Feel your right leg. And release any tension on your right leg. And then be aware of your left leg. Notice all sensations in your left leg. Be aware of both of your legs, both of your feet. Notice any sensation. And then finally relax your legs. Bring your awareness to your hips. You feel that your hips are melting into the floor. Notice all sensations in your hips. And see if you can relax all the tension you're holding there, softening every part. Bring your awareness to your lower belly. Soften that area in a way you feel the breath. Moving all the way deep into your lower belly. Bring your awareness to your solar plexus. 
No, this is their tension there. And release of your tension. Bring the awareness to your ribcage, your chest. Notice all the sensations there. And then relax that area. Be aware of your back, your lower, your middle, your upper back, the whole spine. Imagine you're releasing all the tension on your spine. Feel light on your spine, light in your chest, light on your collarbone area, on your neck, on your shoulders. Be aware of the shoulders and feel how they are slowly falling heavy on the floor. Bring your awareness into the right arm. Into your right hand. Imagine that right arm and hand flowing into the, into the floor, softly touching the floor by experience that sensation of flowing. Bring your awareness to the left arm. The arms flow soft and loose. Bring your awareness to your hand. Left hand. Your left hand is flow. Bring your awareness to your neck. Bring your awareness to your head. The back of the head. Now bring your awareness to the front of the head and your face. Notice all the sensation of, on your face. Bring your awareness into your lips and the area around your lips. Be aware of the muscles in your face, the muscles around your eyes. Soften the area around the around your eyes, between your eyebrows, in your forehead. top of your head, your hair, and as you're flowing, imagine this little light 
coming from the inside of the chest. Imagine that every time you inhale, you're making that light bigger. Every time you exhale, it expands to the sides. Every time you're inhaling, the light just got bigger. And as you exhale, the light is expanding through your abdomen, through your arms, through your head. Now inhale, make that light even bigger. And as you exhale, imagine you're expanding that light through the legs, the top of the head, all the way to your hands. Now inhale one more time. Make that light even bigger. Now it's expanding beyond your body, filling up this room, filling up everyone around you. And as you're expanding that light, embrace feelings of joy, of peace, and well-being for yourself and for others. Next time you inhale, imagine that light expanding, going beyond this space. Moving all around. Make that light bigger, strong. And as you do that, let's embrace feelings of joy, well being, and peace for yourself and others. Little by little, we're going to start waking up the body. So start wiggling your toes and fingers. Enjoy the sensation of being able to move the fingers and toes. Maybe stretch your feet, stretch your hands, move your ankles and wrists. And when you're ready, just throw the arms back and do a good stretch of the whole body. Slowly bring the knees up to the chest and hug your legs. Take your time. And roll to the left or right side, whatever feels good right now. And at your own time, at your own pace, come into a seated position. Join hands together right in front of the heart.
Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Hope you all have a good day. Namaste. Namaste.